Except that Linz is just twisted enough that he might enjoy tricking people into frying themselves into his trap. I, I doubt that. I mean, it would cause Bradley to go mad again were he to figure out that I weren't around anymore. He's not that stupid. No, I'm not a fainting blossom. I reach out and press my hand against the shifting surface, my shoulders tensed in an anticipation of a shock that never comes. No electric tingle, no heat. It's a bit like pushing on a waterbed. You can feel it give it your touch, but it remains solid. Oh, God. I don't get why waterbeds are a thing. They're horrible. Just get an air mattress. Unless they get a slow puncture like everyone I've ever bought. I know, ringing endorsement. Interesting. Hey, stop looking at my ass. Oh, oh, you mean, you mean the experiment. Sorry. I look back at Linz, who has some sort of oscilloscope in his hands, displaying complex wave patterns. What now? Oh, that'll do for the moment. Well, let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Raphael and I can handle it. He's a scientist too? No, nope, he's an obedient pair of hands. Well, so he's just a guinea pig, essentially. Right, got it. Come to think of it, Linz did order Raphael to fetch his handcuffs. Is he your boyfriend? <laughs> oh, wow! I think that's one hell of a, uh, assumption to get to. And what if he were? How would Janet feel if Linz and Raphael being lovers? Be intrigued, be happy for them. <laughs> Don't want to know. <laughs> oh, God. Somehow, I don't think don't want to know will get me anywhere here. Oh, God, I've got to do this, haven't I? Is there anywhere I can go round? There's got to be. Yeah, so that's how to get here. Now, how do I get up there? Because I'd be intrigued. I, I would. I'd, I'd, I'd be intrigued. I, I wouldn't care about anything else. You know what? I'm at one of those difficult situations where I don't even know what I want to decide. Right. So I can either be happy for them or I can be intrigued. Intrigued or be happy? It's a 19-year-old girl who looks like a 14-year-old. She's going to be intrigued for them like fucking gossip. And that's what all 19-year-old girls do, right? It's, it's, just, it's, it's gossip until about 40. And then suddenly it's gossip about what's on TV. Right. Well, you make a cute couple. You don't have to hold back on my account, you know. Oh. I mean, if you wanted a kiss or anything. Oh, my God. That is just the typical response I'd expect from someone who knows nothing. <laughs> You'd like that, would you? Um, sorry to disappoint you. Raphael is my housemate, not my lover. Why didn't he just say so then? He enjoys playing games too much. He's a scientist. And a weird scientist. Of course he does. Alvin enters the room and scowls at me. What are you doing out here? Assisting me with my inquiries. Alvin rolls his eyes, apparently not appreciating Lin's odd turns of phrase. I don't think he knows much beyond the word life. So, I'm, I, I'm not surprised that he's kind of downtrodden on a Lin's for using proper English. Nathaniel said I should fetch everyone for dinner. You're letting Bradley out? He can starve for all I care. We follow Alvin to the dining room where Raphael waits for us. There you are. Janet, would you like, what would you like for dinner? Well, dinner isn't done yet? <laughs> what? Janet is in a hurry to leave. If you'll come with me, we can... You need to eat. You skipped lunch already today. Oh, all right. Oh, look at them caring for one another. Isn't that fucking cute? And watch everyone speculate how they're probably gay. Linz and Alvin seat themselves at the table. Is Nathaniel coming? He's fetching the wine. Now, what do you want for dinner? Pretty sure wine isn't legal in America till 21. Oh, God. Um, what's available? Eggs, mushrooms, some chicken, two bags of salad, pizza, frozen raspberries, baguettes, garlic, bread, a couple of tuna steaks, potatoes, corn on the cob, a roast. I'll have all of it, please. <laughs> scrambled eggs, uh, by the way, scrambled. It's really easy if you say what sort of thing you like. A grilled mushroom sandwich sounds nice. Nathaniel enters carrying two bottles of wine. I've never drank any sort of alcoholic beverage for dinner with a sandwich. That's just the weirdest thing in the world. Would you care for a glass? I'm underage. Really? How old are you? 19? That's old enough. I think it is in Europe, but not around here. I suppose his parents have been giving him wine since he was a child. I never get that. How Americans seem to see, just look at Europe and go, huh, it's all the same. <laughs> it's like there's so many differences. 
<laughs> you can drink uh, beer in Germany when you're 16. It's brilliant. And I, I wouldn't suggest anyone do it. But, you know, it, it, it's cool. <laughs> like I've ever adhered to that. All right, I'm going to stop with the morals. Don't worry, I don't drink either. I'll go check on the food. As he bustles off to the kitchen, Nathaniel pours a glass of red wine and hands it to Alvin without being asked. Hey, I'm... I'm all up for some wine. And I... I'll probably end up date raped, but <laughs> I'm all up for some wine. Linz, up to you, whatever you think would go best. Nathaniel pours half a glass of white. Take it slow, you'll enjoy the flavour more in the small amounts. Flavour's missing a you. <coughs> Get it? Fix, Tanako. Games. I want to patch out, which fills with that immediately. <sighs> Linz takes the glass and swirls it thoughtfully before allowing a tiny bit to pass his lips. I've never really understood the appeal. There are better tastes and faster routes to drunkenness. But you look more romantic drunk on wine than on vodka. Yeah, I know, but I mean, look, he's a guy with long hair and white. Look, long white hair. I don't really think he cares. Although that's quite a gay comment <laughs> coming from him. He salutes Nathaniel with his glass and takes a sizable sip. One of these days I should find some absinthe. <laughs> absinthe. That's, that's illegal in certain countries, isn't it? I'm not sure if America's one of them, but it's got to be. Ah oh yes, the true artist's beverage. Should you discover a bottle, I would be happy to share it with you. You do know that's illegal. Oh yeah, fucking it was illegal. I, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, legalities in England, but I saw one when I went to visit a mate, Cough Sarah, and she had like an absinthe bottle there. Oh well, I'll, I'll have to check to see if that's legal or illegal. Illegal? It developed an unfortunate reputation for causing hallucination and madness. Yeah, not all unwarranted, is it? Most likely because it was popular with artists, and many of them were at least half mad to begin with, and heavily drugged. Alvin hides a cough behind his glass. <laughs> okay, there are dangers to any drug, legal or illegal. The distinction is usually made by politicians, not scientists. Th yeah, and the public say, It's so bad! like people who say that marijuana is evil like get over it although saying that i'm middle class and live in rural france you know <laughs> it's kind of normal still if it's the law have you never broken a law i don't think so what utter bollocks would you even know there are so many laws in the world you could be violating one right now some laws are outdated or misguided or written by bigots and fools <laughs> like the welsh I seem to remember that in England, ah, uh, I think it's abolished now, but up to quite recently, it was legal if you got a Welshman against a certain wall of a castle and shot him with a crossbow. <laughs> You're allowed to kill him like that, it's perfectly fine. Alright, then you should fight to change the laws. Oh, God. Alright, not that easy, Janet. Um, coming from someone who does know a fair bit about politics... It, it's not just doable with, hey, I got 5,000 signatures on an online campaign. Doesn't quite work like that. And if there isn't time, well, I guess if there were really were uh, I guess if it were really something important, then I'd have to think about it. I'm not really sure what would be that important, though. To be perfectly honest, I think that hair colour is fucking illegal. I mean, look at those highlights in the fringe. <laughs> that should be illegal. What things are important for you? Don't you dare say love. My schoolwork. Whew. Got ourselves out of a rant there. Alvin snorts. In other words, there's nothing in your life worth making sacrifices for. Hey, I work hard for my grades. Not quite sure it works like that. When I get out of here, I'm probably not going to, <laughs> going to get any sleep until Monday in order to finish my homework on time. And there's the rub. Sitting around chatting like this, I can almost believe that these are... That these are my friends! That this is a dinner party. I can almost forget about Bradley completely. <laughs> wow. Janet is such a cock. Like, there is nothing likeable whatsoever about Janet. It's quite impressive. Almost. Okay, so you've got four days until something happens. Dear Lord, this is going to be a long game. Now, this bit goes on your back. <laughs> Oh, my mind. Allow me. I can feel... <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? 
So you're trying to detect something, and the best you could do is something which looks like it's just come out of Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Alright, I can feel his cold fingers against my neck as he brushes my hair aside, and I force myself not to shiver. I am decked out like a jewellery display with wires and magnets and bits of electrical tape. It feels a bit ridiculous, but Linz attaches every piece with surgical concentration. He and Raphael left dinner early to get back to work on this design, while well, I stayed for dessert with Nathaniel and Alvin. Sooner than I expected, they declared it ready for testing. You sure the shield will work? No, that's not how scientists work. The theory makes sense. That's the that's the answer I was looking for. The field should flow around you without even noticing the disruption. However, if you feel any pain, pull out right away. <laughs> Come on! Hanako games. I mean, like, your games are kind of full of innuendos. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to think of that first sentence? Could be because I'm an engineer guy. Whatever. Stray electrical charges near your heart would be uh, very unfortunate. Wow! Wow! Who says that? Be very unfortunate. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. God. Oh, that's reassuring. But it has to work. Everyone says Linz is good at what he does. What would I get through? What do you want me to do? Should I call the police right away? Should I come back in and help you with the power? I think it would be better if you came back inside. Once we have proof that this works, we can make better plans from there. He thumps me on the back, which is slightly annoying, but I'm at least grateful he didn't pat somewhere else. Uh, but, uh, but, a, bit, a bit of a, uh, you know, action would be a miss at this point. Everything is in place. I take a deep breath and turn to face this field. Right hand first, or either foot. What is this, Twister? I reach out to the shifting light, but just as before, my hand encounters a barrier that bends without breaking. Why the sudden, strong, belt-beat music? It's not working! That can't be right! I'm sure you can fix it with a few adjustments. No, something more fundamental is wrong. The shielding should have done something, even if it didn't work entirely. If nothing else, the harmonic should have perturbated it visibly, or burnt out the shield generator through runaway positive feedback. This is most intriguing. The field must be operating on a novel principle. So what do we do now? Do? There's nothing we can do. If it's not responding to science, then there's no way through the field. Wow. Um, that's not the answer I wanted to hear. There has to be a way. I turn... I turn back to the door and pound my fist against it harder. Let me out! Stop that, you'll damage the equipment. I want to go home, I... The sound like ocean waves crashes across my ears, and a pressure melts at the back of my skull. What's that? Twelve minutes pass! Twelve minutes! Oh god. I like the music now though, it's very Final Fantasy, old schoolish. I love this kind of music. When I open my eyes again, I'm lying in bed. Everything is quiet and all the magnets are gone. How did I get here? It would be nice to believe that this is Saturday morning and I'm waking up for the first time and this whole day has been nothing but a strange dream. But I know what I've felt and I know what I've seen. If it wasn't real, then I'm crazy. and I can't believe that, so I have to believe everything <laughs> as it seems. Just ruling out that option immediately. Doesn't help the fact they're in the same room as earlier. You're awake, thank goodness. What happened? You, um, fainted. Or did I get smacked on the back of the head? There's a fine line here. I've never fainted in my life! Well, you were sort of overexcited and screaming and Linz knocks you out. <laughs> I fucking knew it! Baseball bat. He punched me? No! It's a thing he can do with nerves. Well, it still gave me a headache. Hmm. I wonder if he can teach me how to do that. Anyway, if you're feeling okay, we're all meeting downstairs to talk about what to do next. I'm sorry about this. It's not your fault. I'm not actually certain how okay I'm feeling. I've never been unconscious before, that I know of. Sleep isn't quite the same thing. I could probably use a hand. You could probably use a hand with sleeping? Oh, God. Oh, ah, alright, let's move on quickly, dear God. 